if you're in pain, I can get you out of pain. But if there are somebody who's inactive and you get them out of pain, guess what? If they're not active, they're always going to be in pain. Because of Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, welcome all new listeners and uh, welcome back to those who have uh, been around uh, the podcast for a while. Uh, hello. Hello, everyone. It is a new week for me. I am uh, those who don't know, maybe don't follow me on Instagram or um, uh, maybe don't keep in touch with me very often. Um, I am currently on a week long calorie carb sodium cut. Um, this is my third or fourth round on this. And for anybody who's ever done a calorie slash carb cut, it's miserable. No one enjoys this. If you enjoy it, man, you, you love the like mental challenge. Um, it is, it is tough. Uh, I'm in day three, day three, today's Wednesday. Yeah. Day three. Um, so, uh, day three and, uh, I have lost uh, almost eight pounds, um, and it has been interesting. On uh, on Monday, I weighed in at one ninety eight point five. Got to count those points. And I think today I'm at one ninety one ninety point eight. So um, almost eight pounds, and it's been amazing. Um, it's a good mental challenge, and uh, somehow I recruited. Uh, 13 other individuals uh, to do this with me. So uh, if you listeners uh, are any of those people, um, enjoy. You're right there with me. Um, so this this calorie cut for me has been such a good experience in terms of like testing my mental capacity, but then also uh, understanding a lot of what our athletes do. We work with a lot of UFC fighters or just MMA, jiu-jitsu, so they have to do a lot of weight cuts. So um, that's been good. It's been refreshing. So uh, today I think I've only had like four uh, I think 800 calories. I'm over, I'm almost done with my consumption and it's like midday. So, um, somehow I have to learn how to spread this out a little bit better. Uh, nonetheless, uh, what else is happening in life? Uh, my kids are in school, um, this week, so they actually finally got to go back to school and we have somewhat of a routine, so, which is really exciting. Uh, other than that, life is good. Life is good. Um, so why are we talking about this podcast and, uh, why your patients will never, be pain-free. That's a pretty bold statement, never. And this comes from a conversation with a client, um, a former client, current existing, um, and he was uh, about to start lifting weights. He's a weightlifter and he enjoys uh, Olympic lifting. And I hadn't seen him for a while. I hadn't seen him for a couple months. And uh, I said, how's life? What are you up to? And uh, he's, he's a busy guy. He's a tra- he travels. He does uh, photography and he travels. I said, what's been going on? He said, uh, uh, he's been dealing with some pain uh, on his back. And he was very specific. He said, erector, spinae, and I guess he did all YouTube and Google and everything else. And I said, that's that's a lot of information um, for your back pain. And he said, no, I've been spending all this time on it. And I think all of us as PTs can appreciate uh, this type of a, a client coming in. And, and we love it because they have all a lot of information. It makes it uh, easy to, to have that conversation. And, uh, he said, um, he said, he's going to come in and, and get some treatment done. I said, what are you looking for? And, uh, he said, he wants to know why he's having this pain. Cause he's really excited to get rid of it for good. And I, that definitely got my, my radar up and he said for good. And I said, if you don't mind me asking, like, what's your expectation? He said, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to reach pain free. I've spent all this time, the last three months trying to figure out this back pain thing. I've been doing yoga. I've been doing PT exercises. I've done this online uh, self rehab, corrective exercise routine. I've done the books. I've done the YouTubing. I've done the Googling. And I'm like getting there. And I'm like, it's just been hitting a plateau. And uh, I'm just really excited to be pain free. And uh, <laughs> I looked at him and I could tell he didn't like my reaction. I said, Hey, uh, uh, can I tell you something? He said, Yeah. I said, um, Can I be honest? I said, Absolutely. He's, I said, uh, you won't be pain free. And he, his eyebrows went up. Well, what do you mean? I said, uh, I don't think you can be pain free. And, uh, he goes, why? I was like, how old are you? He said 40 something. Right. And, uh, I was like, it doesn't really, it's not an age thing. And it's not even just activity level. Um, there's numerous factors that 
I have witnessed this and seen this and the population that I serve. And so I want to put that as a caveat that the population I serve, this is very accurate. And well, let me explain that as we go on. So this person, this client didn't like that answer. And he said, why? I said, you know, um, ultimately when you're training and you put this much load and you have how many kids and you, I think has two kids and you travel for work and you carry heavy bags and you do all this stuff, um, you're always going to have a little bit of something. And he was very surprised by that. And uh, it's the truth. And, and let me explain a little bit more and why my, my reference point might be a little different than yours. All right. So I used to work in pro sports for many years and uh, I loved every minute of it. I thought it was one of the coolest experiences um, possible. One of the most interesting and beneficial experiences for me was working for the United States Olympic Committee. This was an opportunity to work with like nine other healthcare professionals trying to manage the same humans. And it's very rare that you get that integrative of an approach just logistically and, and um, you know, financially like for that to work besides like a large medical or hospital system. So we used to work with primary care physicians. We used to work with massage therapy. I mean, you name it, everybody was on the same team. And uh, the difference is when I worked there, we used to work on a campus. And so the campus is like a college campus and you have all these athletes, like 200 beds or whatever that is. All these athletes lived there and it was contained within a fencing unit. And it was literally like college, except these are very elite athletes. Like all they do is train. And there was a dining hall, there was uh, rehab services there. I mean, it was all fully integrated. And as a new PT, newer, I think I was uh, two years out of school. I just finished the residency and uh, sports residency at the Ohio State University. And then coming on board, I learned a lot. And what my brain told me and what my all my mentors in PT school was, is like, just fix people, get them better, uh, improve the way they move, I think was the term, right? Like, just, just get them to move better and, and fix them and be pain free. And that's what we do in life. And of course, I come in with that mindset. And I realized quickly that it wasn't possible. <laughs> and it was very frustrating to see that and feel that and come to terms with that. And now as we grow into sports performance and uh, grow our company and our team and our culture and, and the methodology and the systems behind that, the team can greater appreciate what that means because we review this ad nauseum. And I want to share it with you guys and girls, excuse me. So working there, I realized the injury prevention was the most thing, the most important thing, because we get these athletes that if we didn't manage injury prevention or do a lot of preventative work, they would get injured and then they would miss time off of practice or competition. It's too risky financially. And I mean, time wise, I mean, all this was, all these people were, were invested in by a lot of people and, and themselves and their time. So to maximize that, we really spent a lot of time on preventative care. And that to us was m more beneficial. But I also realized when I got them better, or when the team got them better, excuse me, it was a whole team, when we got them better, something else would come up. Because we're a campus, we're seeing them every day. They would have a cold, maybe they had a sinus infection, uh, we got uh, skin, um, you know, issues, uh, we had, uh, you, you name it, we had it, ingrown uh, toenails was a big one. Um, you know, tooth pain, jaw pain, all the things that you go through at home and you and your family or friends, except we now had to be aware of that because they're our responsibility as a team. Now, everybody had their role, right? Like as a physical therapist, I'm not doing any dental work. I'm not, you know, I'm not doing aspects that are not outside my practice. But what you actually get to see is what a human sustains. And then how do you keep an athlete healthy as a whole versus just the musculoskeletal side? And that was a rude awakening for me. So we got to understand, you know, what uh, daily challenges you have, they have as well, but layered on top of expectations of training and achieving outcomes. So as we saw them train, they would come in and I'd say, hey, 
how you feeling? Uh, you know, we, we got you, you know, pain free yesterday. Like, are you feeling anything? And they're like, yeah, my hips bugging me today. I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. So I'll, I'll fix that. I go in and I work and do my magic. And they're like, Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I don't have any issues. Sounds good. And then they go practice and they come back. They're like, ah, oh, but my neck stiff now. Wait, what? I thought we just fixed all this stuff. No, no, no my neck got a little tweaked. Um, I looked quick, too quickly to the left and, and it started to bother me. All right, well, let me work on that. And then the next day we come back and like, hey, how's your neck? Oh my gosh, it's so amazing, cool. Uh, enjoy practice, here's your corrective exercise, here's all the ancient prevention stuff, go do it, okay? And then be like, oh, I stepped off the curb and um, I uh, sprained my ankle. Oh, we're not, okay, let me, let me fix that, how's your hip? And like, oh, it's tightening up again. And it was always like you're just chasing these things, right? They were just like the hip, we get it better fast. And what I realized is if we attack, attack things quickly, it reduced their long-term progressions. So if we beat it with, and anybody who's been around my world, you, you know that I'm all about timelines. And if you give me an injury and a timeline and history, we, we can forecast how long it's gonna take. Nonetheless, we would attack it within 72 hours, address it real fast, tape it, do whatever, all the background stuff, and they would get better, great. But then always something else came up. Oh, my back was tight. Uh, I, I slept wrong or my pillow wasn't really, really good. Uh, I've been wearing my backpack all day. I was on a plane. Um, you know, when I was coughing from being sick two weeks ago, my rib went out. I mean, all, everything, everything, dehydration. Uh, they had food poisoning and now they're coming back from that. I mean, there's just so much, so many layers. And we don't ever think about that as physical therapists. And because that's not normally our role, we're seeing people in a spectrum of life. Primary care will probably see the majority of overall health and wellness stuff. And then once it gets triaged down as musculoskeletal, whether that person self-selects or the primary care sends them our way, that's usually how we get to them or they get to us, excuse me. So when you have all these layers of, you know they're going through all of these things and you're just seeing them through that spectrum, what I realized is in the professional world, because of their volume, because of their intensity, because of their training regimens, they actually would never get better. They were always having something. And it wasn't until I had a conversation with one of the athletes. They're like, I feel like I'm always beat up. I'm just always injured. And I was like, actually, after working with you for six to eight months, I would agree with that. And then we realized that it was just the regimen, the routine, it's not even like poor strength conditioning or poor training or poor rehab. It's just the nature of the beast. It's the nature of working at an elite level that often, that hard, that frequent. So uh, then when I started seeing certain cases, it made total sense to me that, I mean, I would have an athlete totally healthy for a year. Oh my goodness, we're going to do all this injury prevention. And then they end up having... Um, you know, off-season injury and they have a rotator cuff repair uh, or they have a slap tear or they have a hip issue that they don't want to risk, you know, going to the Olympics in two years. So they decide to have a surgery this year or a torn ACL. And though all those things came up where we had to pick our pick and choose our battles of, do we want to rehab this or do we want to get this repaired so they can have less of an issue and be able to work more efficiently towards the goal of the Olympics. And so these are all background cases. Now, uh, it, if you haven't heard me say this, I truly believe that patients and clients, the people you see, if you can fit them along a bell curve in terms of activity level, you can better serve people. And what I mean by that is if you take a bell curve, that's 100% across the spectrum, the 10% on the left and 10% on the right. The 10% on one end of the spectrum is the inactive person who has a lot of pain because they're inactive and they just need to move more and that will keep them out of pain. And those are like, I, I don't like to use these words, but like couch potatoes, the, the, the terms that most people see that they just need to move more. That's it. And the reason why they have pain is like, if I can get you off the couch, if I can get you out of the car, I can get you standing and moving more, you will literally feel better. It's not even a magical exercise. Then you have people on the opposite end of the spectrum who are your pro athletes or your elite level people or your community members who just love exercising. And you're like, you're doing too much. If I can just slow you down, right? Like bring you this way. And the people who don't exercise, you're like, I just want to get you to exercise more. Let's move you this way. So you have your elite level who just need to 
where you brought in and slow them down and don't over exercise them don't do too much and in the middle is the majority of people who they fall off of training they don't move as much or they go or t they try and you know weekend warrior and try and you know exercise all weekend and they're just doing too much too soon but if you can keep them kind of in the middle in that they're training consistently they're doing a little bit of work they're addressing their concerns they're not just you know over overdoing it or just being a couch potato somewhere in the middle lies this happy medium and i call it the bell curve approach and so with pro athletes and elite level community members i realize that these people just train too much too often too intense too you just too much too much so these people i had to bring back and the couch potatoes i had to bring them up and so because of that, what I started realizing is that people were always going to be in pain. And even if you're in the middle of the bell curve, you've always got something. And even you, think about yourself as a clinician, right? Like you're battling something right now. You're probably like massaging your leg or stretching your neck or you're driving and you're adjusting your low back or, you know, you're running right now and your knee's a little achy. Every single one of us has one of those things. Every single one of us from a prior history. And so what's funny is you as a clinician, you probably like doing weightlifting, running, hiking, biking, surfing, uh, functional fitness, you name it. You, you have a passion, weightlifting. And you have your own battles that you work through. But what you fail to realize is your perspective. You paid a lot of money and time to go to school to get educated on how to manage other people. And the funny thing is, because you have that knowledge, you know when to push and pull on certain aches and pains. So for instance, your knee's bugging you and you're supposed to go a 20 mile run, you're probably going to back that off or slow your pace down to accommodate that. The, your patients and clients don't know what that is, so they just go and try it. Uh, if you have a shoulder issue and you're, you love bodybuilding and you know that your shoulder's bugging you, you're not going to go heavy on bench press or shoulder press because you're like, I know that this can turn into something else. So you know how to gauge progress and how to push and pull. Patients and clients don't. So for that reason, they push, they end up having pain, they go see a physician or they go see you, whatever it is. So that's what go, develops the cascade. And so they will always be pain free because they don't have the exact bumpers that you do, the knowledge, the awareness, like that's, it's not fair to compare. So just because you are able to self navigate, negotiate, mitigating or minimizing uh, aches and pains, it doesn't mean they can. And even if they were the most elite, you know, uh, clinician or sorry, patient or client ever, and they had all the, the knowledge, they're still going to need you as a resource because they can only assess and evaluate themselves so much. So they will always need your help. So when you are looking at treating people or athletes, it doesn't matter. It's just now you have to see along where the along where are they along the spectrum of this bell curve. What that'll do is give you a frame of reference. Okay, so if you're in pain, I can get you out of pain. But if they're somebody who's inactive and you get them out of pain, guess what? If they're not active, they're always going to be in pain because they just need more activity. If you have an elite level uh, pro athlete, the trauma, the intensity, the frequency, the duration, everything will always keep them in pain. Always. It's just I'm not talking about the same region. Now, for you, you might say, well, I, I can get somebody knee pain with knee pain, pain free in two visits. How long does that last? You know, oh, well, uh, a month what, or six weeks or I can get them for life. Okay, sounds good. What about their neck? What about their shoulder? They're human. They're going to go and explore other things, right? So if they're a runner, they're going to have plantar fasciitis one month and then knee pain the next month and then opposite hip pain the following three months. What I'm saying is I'm not talking about the same region. They will always be in pain. And that's very important as a clinician. You know, I, I told you guys I have a spectrum of listeners. I have aspiring PTs, new grads, uh, PT students, experienced PTs, veterans all over the world and the United States. I'm not telling you that you're wrong for expecting to get that region pain-free, but that's an instant in time. And when are you seeing them across their lifespan or across the year? If they're a marathon runner, they might be running two to three marathons a year. If they're elite, maybe more or less. So just because you get them great at, in February and you get their knee pain ready, you really think with that frequency, intensity, and duration on a run, 
And with all the perfect stretches, they're still not going to develop a little bit of left-sided knee discomfort, right-sided knee discomfort, or back discomfort. Even if you control all variables, what if they slept wrong? What if uh, uh, they get into a small fender bender? What if they get a step off the curb and they sprain their ankle? They will always have something. That's my point. I think a lot of times we like to, you know, pat ourselves on the shoulder for doing a great job. And I'm all about humility, and I think you have to celebrate your success. But ultimately, I think you have to understand what is your role in this person's life to get them out of pain, get them back to doing what they love. It's not like not always about moving and and the movement and the quality of movement and the nervous system. It's not about that. It, it's about what they're trying to do with that information to be able to get back to running, hiking, doing whatever they love. So knowing that, that's just an instant in time. So you have to celebrate, man, in February of 2021, I helped them with their knee. Now in June or July, they might come back for that, for that, maybe the same knee, maybe the opposite knee, maybe the, the back, the neck, whatever it is. So your patients will always have a challenge being pain-free no matter where they are on that bell curve. It's just where they are. Do you have to move them more? Do you have to move them less? Or do you have to work with them on in the center of that bell curve to figure out how much to push and pull, when to push and pull? That's really the skill set. When you can uh, educate and empower patients and clients to be independent. But the reality is they're not physical therapists, so you're never truly going to empower them with total body uh, awareness. And, and the reality is once they leave your office, they forget about you. They forget every, everything you said because they're just humans. They're going to go and do the things that they love, and you are a snippet of their day, of their week, of their life. And so they're going to take your information. They'll apply it to their knee, but what they don't know is how to do the same thing with the shoulder, how to do it with the neck, how to do it with the low back. My point to this is that we are all a part of their year-long lifelong journey to just like enjoy life and their sports and uh, their passions and so as a teenager you might be working with a uh, excuse me you might be working with teenagers who you know enjoy playing soccer um, that's perfect great uh, you got this person with uh, um, Achilles sinonitis and you got them better and they're 100 percent pain-free and you're like Okay, good for you. Um, what's the word we use now? I think discharge is the word that you guys use. Okay, discharge. You discharge them, right? And then they come back months later with Oshkut Slaughters, right? Or two years later, Oshkut Slaughters. Uh, or the you know their back pain, or they they have a text to neck. You know they're growing up and they they're always on their phones. So there will always be something. Is my point. And so you as a clinician need to appreciate where in time you're helping them and take a step back and say where else what am I not seeing where else are they going to develop discomfort where else are they going to do it and that is a better approach than to be this almighty PT and say I did it I got this person back pain free and they're the reason why they're playing in that game on Saturday that's false what we also fail to realize is that there was a coach involved, there was maybe a coach, a, a technical coach, a strength conditioning coach, a fitness coach, uh, their parents pushing them to go every day. I mean, there's multiple layers on why people are successful. And working at the United States Olympic Committee, it was humbling. I really loved it. And it's changed my framework and how I approach uh, every single client and how I approach the team here at Sports Performance and really looking at this is not about rehab. It's not about knee pain. It has nothing to do with that. It's about helping somebody along a spectrum so that they can continue doing it versus a moment in time and saying, I got their shoulder better and they'll never have to see me again. Even if you built out the perfect exercise program and gave them all the perfect tips, they will always need the support because they will never be pain free. So uh, that is that is essentially what you have to kind of think about this as a um, uh, funny story. I had a client, uh, he's a UFC uh, legend, MMA fighter, and uh, <laughs> I asked him, uh, how was your weekend, right? Or how are you? How's your day? And he's like, it's the same as yesterday. And I said, uh, I understand that, but I want to clarify. What do you mean? He's like, I do the same thing every day. I train twice a day. I eat various, the same foods. I go to sleep 
around the same time and I train every day and I get beat up. So how do you think I feel? <laughs> and I was like, you know what? That's a really good point. Um, so I should have said, you know, how much different is today than yesterday, right? He'd be this the same. So when you're working with people, it, it's, and, and his perspective was he'll never, he, he actually knew it because of his job. He, he's in MMA. That's different. Like, you know, there's going to be trauma all the time. So when you have non-traumatic things, um, like, uh, running or non-contact, I should say non-contact. So tennis or whatever, maybe, um, you have to understand that if they continue to train, and they're going to be in that bell curve in the center, left or right, they're always going to have that. And I think the best thing we can do as clinicians is change our perspective on how we serve people. And what that allows us to do is have a better conversation with patients and clients. Um, that's like a primary care physician giving you um, meds for like a sinus infection and expecting you maybe to never have it again. But what they can do is educate you on the preventative side and then know that if they come back, that you'll be able to help them. The, a primary care physician is not a one-time instant. They will, will always have sickness, will always have something, uh, a headache, a migraine, a, a sinus infection, an ear infection, um, sore throat. I mean, you name it. We're always going to need those people. And I think that as clinicians, unfortunately, there's a couple of things that have framed us to think that we can get people pain-free. I think I have to blame PT school as the number one PT school frames us to think that we are um, pain specialists and that's all we deal with and I think that you have to rethink that and um, you know uh, in PT school I was taught that we're movement specialists and I understand we all have to own pieces uh, or the thought process that we have to own certain pieces of um uh, the medical spectrum so we can have a footprint somewhere right whether you you own the bones or you own the the skin or you own the heart or you own the the, the uh, teeth like everyone has their hand somewhere and so we were the movement or the musculoskeletal experts and i understand that i think that as we progress and technology expands and we have more internet and and you know instagram and youtube and the consumer no longer cares about like the specialists, they just want to know who can help them. It's actually more confusing than ever. And so as you guys think about this, think about, you know, pro athletes, think about what they have to go through every single day. Um, think about the client who really thinks that they're going to be pain free. And I think it, that would do them injustice to, to really like, serve them improperly. And they'll know, yeah, yeah, you just keep on going, you're going to be pain free. Like just don't, you know, keep exercising, you know, five days a week, and you'll, you'll, 100% be pain free or go do yoga, go do Pilates, you're going to be pain free. Not true. Those are just mitigating and minimizing the risk. But we know that nothing is 100% guaranteed. Even if you didn't exercise, you'd actually probably be in more pain because of how stiff your joints are going to be. So somewhere along the spectrum of too much, too little lies this fine line of learning how to ride the wave. And that's all you're doing. You're just trying to keep them in that zone with more education, more support. That's where the magic happens. And so when you're doing these things, um, see yourself as take a step back and say, where am I helping this person along the spectrum? Um, are they just starting with me? Where can I help them? Um, know that all of their exercising, all of their trauma is a bell curve and you need to identify how you're helping them. Are you giving them less, less exercises or more exercises or trying to control them or putting them in this bell curve in the center where you can truly help them? by giving them more knowledge and empowerment, but know that they might drift left or right. That is true. People aren't gonna stay there the whole time because they're gonna start a new sport. Now they start surfing and now their shoulders hurt. Now they're doing too much. And now they were hurt and they had to have surgery and now they're just doing too little. Now you have to push them and try to give them other ideas on how to burn calories without having to stress the shoulder. So people are gonna always come and go through that. So see where they are and treat them accordingly. Uh, I don't think you overpromise uh, and tell them that they're going to be pain free. If you're telling people they're going to be pain free, I think that's very, very tough. And I think that you need to rethink that because truly you're keeping them pain free for an instant, a moment in time for that one body part, for that one sport in that one day of that one year. And then tomorrow it's going to be messed all up. You have to realize that. 
I mean, they can trip over a rock. They can get hurt. They're always going to have something. And um, as long as they continue exercising, they will always have musculoskeletal aches and pains. Always. Always is a big word. They will always, even if they're doing too much or too little, they'll always have something. Neck tightness, wrist doesn't feel well, whatever it is, there's going to be something. And so just letting them know that you're going to keep them moving and allowing them to do that is really your specialty. That's really where you come along. Um, so uh, this knowledge, nothing, none of this is new, but the awareness is the most important to really rethink your framework on what you do for people and where you are uh, in your professional career, whether you're a PT student. If you're a PT student, you're ahead of the game. Uh, you know, don't get sucked into too much PT school, uh, you know, focus on they're just trying to get you to pass this exam. I, and I get that. That's their, that's the job. Um, but then you can come out of that and understand what you truly do for people along a spectrum of a bell curve of trying to keep them fit and moving. Now, this is ortho sports. That's my specialty. And, and the people I serve want to stay healthy and fit. So, um, again, that's a caveat for this podcast that uh, it is the, the people that I see in day in, day out. Uh, it's the athletes. It's the people who want to be an athlete. Again, all of those individuals. So uh, awareness is, is power. Um, and this sets you up for more success because uh, it allows you to have better conversations with people. And if you can do that, expectations are everything. And then you can tell people, give them a little reality check, honest, upfront conversation. And once you have that conversation, now they have the expectations like, oh, I have power over maintaining myself and that this knee can get hurt again, but so can everything else. So I'm going to have to learn how to control how I exercise and train. That is a better conversation than, hey, your knee's pain's better. Just keep doing the exercises. If you have that, if that's your closing and you're telling somebody like, we'll see you again, never. I think that's a really hard conversation to have. Then the person comes back, they're like, now it's my shoulder. Like, no, we talked about this you're always going to have something and the flavor of this month or this year is the shoulder. So um, food for thought, as you continue to grow as a professional, insert this into your framework and it is a game changer on how you serve people. And those people appreciate those conversations. Why? Because it's the truth. And uh, as you uh, shake your shoulders or, you know, stretch your neck for the aches and pains that you have, they don't have your knowledge and power and awareness. That's not fair to expect that they would never have to use your services again. So just FYI, uh, your patients will never uh, be, uh, be pain-free. And uh, that's exactly why. So I hope that helps. Uh, I am off to pick up my kids. I hope you guys are doing amazing and uh, continue to impact people's lives, but with more awareness of what you truly do for them. All right, guys. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Take care.